Hello, this is going to be my discussion on pages 146 and 147 in your textbook, which is in chapter 5, and it um, talks a little bit about the balance of payments. Um, your uh, textbook gives you kind of a very narrow and very incomplete, I think, in my, in my humble opinion, of what balance of payments pertains to. Um, as I've criticized your textbook in other clips, I won't uh, um, dwell on that point, but it, it, it seems obsessed about the idea of having um, you know, a positive trade balance. And as I've pointed out um, in those videos, this philosophy that somehow positive uh, trade balances are inherently good so that you export more than import um, it is called mercantilism and this philosophy of economics was pretty much um, disproven as being sort of backwards and wrong back in like this by Adam Smith and back in was like seven in the late uh, 17 well, 70s when when he wrote uh, so we're talking you know 18th century um, you know, this whole way of thinking was shown to be to be uh, false and uh, wrong. So that's why I'm not going to teach you mercantilism, because um, I, I know that it's basically disproven. Um, the balance of payments, I mean, really, um, in this clip, I just want to sort of explain here from my notes, which I took... Um, again from the Lipsy uh, textbook uh, which I think is really good so they explain it in much more detail and I'm just going to sort of water it down to give you the, the gist of it is basically what is the balance of payments it is basically an accounting record of what actually transpired over usually a course of a year and it pertains to a record of a country's transactions with the rest of the world. Right, so in, in, in business, right, we have accounting systems. So this, and this keeps track of a business um, and how it interacts through transactions with other uh, companies, right? So a, a company, a single company could, for instance, uh, buy assets right so for example let's say pretend we're General Motors so we might um, you know buy um, a whole bunch of inputs to go into our inventory for production so maybe steel or tires or or um, seats uh, steering wheels you know so we might buy components of our final car um, from a whole variety of different vendors, we put that into inventory, which would be considered an asset. Okay, then eventually when we build the car, we get a finished good asset, right? Um, and of course, we also have transactions for liability. General Motors might try to borrow money from other people, let's say, by issuing uh, a long-term bonds or something, right? So in other words, a company keeps track of its transactions with other companies. Right. So, and it's not just suppliers. It's it's uh, that's part of it, of course, and it's not just with investors, but it's also with customers. Right? If people start buying your cars, then you would record that as revenue. Of course, probably with General Motors, it would be selling it to, let's say, that car dealership or something, and then it's out of GM's hands, kind of thing. Um, Right, but so there's also the transactions on the sales side, of course, and ideally in business you want to make a lot of sales. Hopefully, sales uh, exceed your expenses. That that difference is what we call the the bottom line, the net income. Okay, so basically, when it talks about balance of payments. They're talking about a record of transactions. This is like a gigantic accounting scheme uh, between Canada and the rest of the world. The ROW, row, the rest of the world. And basically, 
what we do or what is done by the statisticians who figure all this stuff out for us is they classify transactions. And so really all the rest of this introductory discussion on balance of payments is going to do is focus on all this classification. I mean, if this was like an introductory biology course, we'd sit around and talk about, you know, we had different animals. Okay, let's, for example, and there's, you know, kingdom, the kingdom of animals, and there's different, you know, classes and, and orders and species and so on, and, and they break everything down to, into these little hierarchies. Right, so we start with a very broad concept of, you know, kingdom of animals, and then we work our way down to individual species, like, you know, dog, <laughs> called, you know, let's say the, uh, what kind of dog is there, like a German Shepherd, uh, or something like that. I'm not really a biology professor, but that's the basic idea, uh, is that, you know, you take a very broad concept, and then they break it all down to these sub-layers and sub-layers until you get down to the very uh, detailed, specific level at like the species level. And there's always intermediate levels as well. And that's basically what they do with accounting too. It's the same basic idea. So you have very broad concepts um, and then we break it down. Okay, so that's sort of what I'm gonna do now. The, um, the um, when they do this, they look at each transaction that Canada engages in and they ask themselves whether this represents a receipt or a payment from the perspective of Canada. So in other words, is Canada getting receipts of, uh, from foreigners or is Canada have to pay foreigners? And that's really all this boils down to. Um, and ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, the total value of all receipts has to equal the total value of all payments. Okay. So everything that we sort of, that comes in has to equal sort of what goes out kind of, kind of idea. Re total receipts have to equal total payments to the, re to the rest of the world. Now, so starting at sort of the higher level, there are three very broad accounts that make up this accounting scheme. The first is called the current account. Um, the second is called the capital account and the third is called the official financing account and um, when everything is said and done you know when the fat lady has sung it's all over you know it's it, it, when, it, when, it, all, when the dust settles and we, we run all the statistics so to speak what should eventually happen, sort of ignoring statistical discrepancies and measurement errors and all those things, um, is that the, if you take the balance of the current account and you add it to the balance of the capital account and you add it to the balance of the official uh, financing account, then eventually that, that sum should be zero. That's what they mean by balance of payments, is that when, the, when everything is said and done, everything in aggregate and total adds up to zero. And then it balances. Okay? If it doesn't add up to zero, then it's not in balance. Something is um, all right. Okay, so I'm going to stop now uh, this clip and come back and discuss the current capital and um, official financing account in a little bit more detail. So we're going to drill down basically and get into those more detailed subdivisions of these three broad accounts.